Uh, okay, so I'm going to give um, a brief overview of what Stimulus is all about. So Stimulus is an open source JavaScript framework. It allows developers to be able to create interactive and data-driven web applications focused on the data-driven. So it is lightweight in the sense that um, it focuses on enhancing the user experience without complex build configurations. So setting up Simulus in your project, either a new project or an existing project is very easy because you don't have to like start um, installing complicated um, dependencies or all that. So if you'd like to test out Simulus, what I advise you to do is um, you clone the Stimulus starter repo, which is here. I'll drop the link after uh, the session. You clone the Stimulus starter repo. So once you've cloned the repo, it comes with all the uh, pre-configured files. And it also comes with a father and folder that contains those files called Stimulus starter. So once you've cloned it, you see the inside of that folder, then you need to install the various dependent so you can use um, YAN or NPM. It depends on the package manager you are comfortable with. So once you do um, YAN or NPM install, it will install all the dependency for you. And then you start up the server by running NPM or YAN start, and it defaults to local host 9000. So that is like the process, the basic process on how to start up um, similar starter on your on PC. This is if you want to test out how it works, you want to probably maybe build simple controllers and get used to how the framework, framework works. So it uses data attributes for interactivity. Stimulus is all about HTML first approach, which is why it uses data attributes in order to attach itself to the DOM and then manipulate the HTML element. There are four major concepts in stimulus. These are like the most important things you need to know in stimulus. They are the controller, the targets, the value, and the actions. So in order to further explain this concept, I'm going to build, uh, we are going to build uh, a simple increment button. So for the front-end developers on this call, I'm sure you've built something like that before. But then if, you're not built, if you've not built something like that before, I'm sure that you've used it. So probably maybe when you're shopping online and you want to like um, increase the quantity of the product you are trying to buy, so the button that you click and then it increases the number, that is the increment button. So that's what we are trying to build right now. So I will explain the the first concept, which is the controller, and then I'll open up my code editor and we'll try to like build up something. So the controller, just like the way your class attributes connect your HTML to your CSS, that is the way that data controller in Stimulus connects the HTML to your JavaScript. So the data controller attribute takes in um, a value, which is called the identifier. That identifier is what reference your stimulus class in, uh, that's what reference your stimulus class in your file. So I'm going to show you uh, an example. Remember we are building an increment button with these um, four concepts. So when I say the data controller, this is what I mean. This is the data controller, it's a data attribute, and it takes in the value of an identifier. This W increment is an identifier. So remember that I said the identifier reference the stimulus class in your file. This increment here is referencing this, this class here, this increment controller. So the data controller is what links this, your HTML file with your, um, TypeScript file or JavaScript file, it's all links it together and gives you the ability to be able to manipulate the DOM, which is what everything inside of the scope of this element, which is the button and the paragraph. 
So we are building an increment button. Sorry, we are building, yeah, we are building an increment button. So everything here is inside of the scope of the data controller. So that means whatever we put inside of here, we can use it to what, manipulate the, the elements. We can manipulate any of them. So let me show you the way it looks in bakery demo. So this is the button. This is the button, this is the paragraph tag, and it's zero right now because we've not written any of the codes for it. So the next concept is the target. So the target is usually an element that is affected whenever an action, whenever an event occurs, an actionable event occurs. So in the example of the increment button that we are building, we want to click on the button and we want the paragraph to be affected, which is we want this paragraph here, this number, we want it to increase by whichever number, it could be one, it could be two, but we want it to increase. So whenever we click on the button, the paragraph is the one that is being affected. So any element that is being affected by an actionable um, event, that is what the target in stimulus. So if you want to um, write the target for stimulus, the format is, you write the data and the identifier, which is W increment, and then the target. So it take, the value can be anything. You can decide to name it whatever you want, but it should be something unique or rather something that is related to what you are doing. So we can say count because we want to increase the count of this paragraph element. So if you want to assess this, um, this target, you want to assess it inside of your controller class, you have to call the static keyword. So this, this static keyword gives you the ability to be able to um, assess your elements. Could be static values, could be static targets, could be static class. So count, it could be more than one. You can have more than one target in inside the controller, just like you can have more than one controller class inside of an element. And we have the declare keyword. The declare keyword is used to set the type of that. Uh, it's used to set the type of either the target or the value or the class inside of this controller. And target. So remember, it's an HTML element. Okay. So now we've accessed the, the target. So we can do with it whatever we want. We can manipulate it. We can change probably the style. We can increase the, the text content. We can do with it whatever we want. Now, since we've been able to access it inside of a class based instance. Then the next is the, the values. So values are like something that. Values are like very important in um, stimulus. So they are a way for you to manipulate um, to manage the state of your um, controller of your element. So let's say in this case that we are building um, the increment button. At the first instance that you load up the website, this the value for the increment, this button here is zero. It's going to be zero. So but when, when you click on the button, the state changes because the value has not actually increased. So that value attribute gives you the ability to be able to manage the state of your um, controller. So if you want to um, write out um, 
So this is the format for writing out the data value. So the first is always the data, followed by the identifier, then the name, the, the unique name that you want to call your value, followed by value. <laughs> then it takes in an argument, um, takes in a value. So the value could be anything, but in this case, we want it to be zero because we want it to display inside of this um, paragraph. So I can decide to remove this and then we'll replace it later. So if you want to access the value inside of your class, um, controller class, you still use the static keyword. But this time around, you are using values instead of targets. And it's an object instead of an array. So increments. So you can have you can have um defaults inside of values. So defaults are like the the default states that you want your uh element or your controller based element that has a data controller. It's like the state that you want it to be when you load up your your website or when you load up when you load it up in the DOM. So we can decide to set the default here to zero. I decide to set the default here to zero and then remove remove this from here and it's still going to work because it, it is the default. Even when you've not uh, created that attribute inside of the element, it's, it's still going to work. Why do I keep making this mistake? Then we give it a type, which is number. So increment value, number. And the last is um, action. So an action calls uh, a method whenever an event occurs. So when we click on the button, and then it affects that paragraph target, we are calling a method on a click event. So when we click on the button, when we click on the button, it's affecting the target, which is the par paragraph, yes. And then it's calling a method. So a method could be a function or, yeah, it, it is a function, actually. Just like the way when you're uh, writing in JavaScript, probably maybe you have uh, a button and then you had an event listener of click to it. So that click event is calling a function. That's the same thing that the data action and stimulus actually do. So we are adding this data action to the button because it's, it's, but it's the button that we are clicking. So this is the syntax for writing it, data action. And then it takes in three arguments. So the first is the event that happens, the event that you want to happen, which is the click event. Stimulus as a default event for data action for buttons. So the default event is click. So you can decide to add this click event here, or you can decide to remove it, and it's still going to work. Then the next argument is your identifier, which is the W increment. And followed by the methods, the methods that you want to call when that event occurs. So I'm going to call it increment. Let me change this. Increment count. Count. So remember that the method is called what increment. So we are going to write the method here. So let's do something simple. Let me console.log i. 
I can actually decide to use a debugger here, but I'm more used to consuming that way. So let's wait for the build. Okay. All right. So when I click on the button, you see that I shows up here because once we click on the button, we are calling the method. We are calling that increment method on that click event, which is the high. So since we are building an increment, we have to assess the text content of the target element. So we can use this dot um, element because stimulus uses a class-based approach. And target dot test content. Increment count value. So every time we click on that button, we want to increase the count by one. So we click, it increases. Uh, we click again, it increases three, four, five, six. Now we've successfully built an increment button, but there's something else I'd like to talk about, which is the life cycle method. So the life cycle method uh, allows you, like this connect method, for example, allows you to be able to access the, the DOM when it assess the DOM, yes, when it's um, the stimulus controller, which is the data controller, is connected to the element. So remember that we have a default count here, which is zero, but we are still using this zero from the, the paragraph. So I want to remove it, and then I'm going to set the same thing that I did here. That's what I'm still going to do there. But this time around, remember that the this paragraph here has there's nothing inside of it. You get, but once we load up the the DOM, we uh, reload the page. You find out that this actually like changes the text content of the of the target element to the increment count value, which is default to zero. see it, it's zero so i can decide to change it to another number let's say 20. i'm still going to show 20. so whenever i click it increases and yeah that is it so the next section, uh, why stimulus in Wagtail? So as you can see from the example I just gave, stimulus is like, it's very simple and straightforward to learn. So since we want it, uh, a lot of people to be able to contribute to stimulus, uh, to be able to contribute to stimulus in work too. So this is like the best approach for them. Since it's used a data attributes based approach, everybody is going to like learn that same um, manner of coding you understand. So it's not difficult to learn on like React or Vue that would like take you a long time. 
then it provides a consistent way to add behavior to DOM elements without compromising the Django template. Remember that Stimulus is an HTML first um, framework. It's focused on making, uh, it's focused on enhancing the user experience, you understand, which is why they are using data attributes in order to be able to attach itself to the DOM and gives you the ability to be able to manipulate the HTML element. So if you want to use stimulus inside of the Django, you just have to like attach the data attribute, which is the data controller inside of the <clears throat> attributes in Django, and then you are connected to um to the stimulus. Then also it's it's more secure actually like compared to inline scripts or windows globals like uh it reduces the use of scripts and windows global so using um, inline scripts and windows globals actually like slows down the performance of the of the application and at the same time it's it's not as secure as using um, stimulus data attribute approach then also it fits unknown bugs that might have occurred due to windows global so there was an implementation i did the button long running implementation so in the in the image section in bakery demo here when you are uploading a duplicate image there's a button that shows up which is the update button this button here, which is this update button. So using the previous approach, the button long running approach, it was using uh, Windows Globals to init the function button long running. It selected the class button long running and then added the JavaScript, um, JavaScript to that um, class. But because of the fact that it was using um, Windows Globals, some of some bugs occurred which was something that we noticed after the switch from windows globals which is the button long running to stimulus actually happened so it was after that switch that we actually noted noticed that yes this place is supposed to exhibit that uh, behavior of the button long running which is when you click on the button it has a spinner and then disables the button for some few seconds okay so that's the button long running um, behavior. So this was not working before until we switched the button long running to stimulus. So the third process for stimulus conversion. So before you start writing the coding, when you want to convert uh, a UI component to stimulus, I mean, it, it's not all about coding. You don't just jump right into writing code you have to like understand the implementation which is the previous implementation you have to understand what is doing like what the code is all about you understand you have to find out where the code is in the bakery demo you have to test it out look at it like just basically understand what the code is doing then if the previous code worked with data attributes find out where they've been used in the code base like the init dismissible that is used to dismiss what's new in Wagtail and in the help section in sidebar. So that one uses a data attribute approach. So you have to like find out where they have been used in the code base because Stimulus uses a data attribute approach, yes. So which means that you definitely need to attach those data attributes to where the HTML files are, or if it's Python that was used to create the widget, you have to find out where that Python file is because you still need to attach the Stimulus data controller attributes inside of it. Then find out from the implementation if you should use stimulus class, target, or values. So like from that um, body long running example, so we use stimulus class, which is when the button long running is active. The previous implementation just, uh, it's the previous implementation use the class a uh, button long running active that when you click on that button that class is being added to the button you understand so you have to find that if such a situation is actually happened then you have to use a stimulus class based approach which is the static classes the way we do it for the static target then you also have to find that if that's uh 
that implementation needs a target like for the button log grenade it actually like uses a target sometimes so the target was an emphasized element so you have to find that such situations if it needs a target if it changes from one state to another and we definitely know that the stimulus button long grenade would use stimulus sorry the button long grenade would use um values because the previous state it was not disabled it was not disabled there was no spinner but when you clicked on it the state changed you understand so you definitely know that you have to use stimulus um values there so yeah if it's an actionable implementation like performing an action find out which action and if there is a target that that action affects just like in the button log running you click on the button it changes the the test content of the emphasized element it could be save the, the test content before could be saved and then when you click on it it changes to saving so you have to like notice all those things you understand before you start writing out the code so that it will be easier for you you can just probably take a pen or paper and then note those things down so that when you start coding them out in typescript it will be easy then convert the implementation to typescript with stimulus so we are using typescript because stimulus has um a first class um a first class um it's it supports TypeScript, and when you are using TypeScript, it's you have um, less probability of making errors because of the type checking. Then I'm going to explain this um, implementation I did before. I think last week, uh, W slog. So this is where it's it's being used in the code base. It's used in the page edit under the promote tab here. So what, what it does is that once you enter a test here, and then you move out of focus of this input element, it slogifies it in the sense that it had these dashes to it. You understand so the previous implementation before used a jquery approach and the function was being called globally which is something that we are trying to avoid because calling uh, all the functions globally like actually add more complexity to the code so as you can see from here it's using a blur event it's an actionable uh um, it's an actionable um, controller so in such a way that when you move away from the element, which is the input element, this function is actually being run, which is this dot value clean for slug. The clean for slug is a util. It's the one that actually adds that dash. It's, it's a regex, uses regex function. So it's the one that actually adds that um, dash to the input value. So you can see the previous implementation HTML here. It has a name, area attribute, the mass length, the required. Now see the 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 stimulus based um, approach. So what we did was we um, checked, we found out if the um, implementation would actually need to use stimulus um, values. We should find out that yes, it's it's using stimulus value because there's a previous state and there is an after state. So the values that we added there is the allow Unicode. The allow Unicode is to check if the value has a Unicode value, and then it allows it, which is this default force, or it does not allow. So it does not allow it, which is this default force, or it allows it. So then remember it's an actionable element, which means you have to, uh, you need to have a method that is going to be called when that event occurs, which is this logify method here. So what this logify method does is that this dot element dot value is grabbing the instance, like the instance of that um, element that the data controller is on. So it's grabbing the value of the element and then it's, it runs this um, utils in it, which is this clean for slow. Then the first argument here is this dot value dot trim. So it's getting the value of the element here, yeah? and then it's trimming it, it's trimming the spaces at the front and at the back of the value. 
They remember the uh, static values that we called before, allow Unicode value. So these Unicode logs take in the, uh, the value, this dot allow Unicode value. So it could be false, it could be true. Now see the resulting HTML. It, you can see that it's, it's way simpler. We have the data controller, which is the W log, the data action, which is what the action, the event that happens, the blur event, then the identifier name, W blur, then the method that is being called when that event happens, which is the sogrifier method here. So uh, if you are interested in contributing to the stimulus and work do, first of all, uh, you set up your code base if you're a new contributor. During the process of the setup, you might run into some issues. So you can come to the new contributor's channel and ask questions there. And there are a lot of people that will be excited to answer your questions. Then from there on, you can decide to get involved by picking up an issue in work too. So like there are a lot of issues um, on Stimulus that has been created recently. And most of them are beginner friendly. Like this, replace mousetrap with stimulus. It's an issue that is very easy. So you can decide to like, you can check out all these issues. You can check out these issues, see if you are interested in it or you feel it's something that you can do and then you start working on it. So you can also follow me on Twitter. This is my Twitter uh, handle. And this is the link to the slides. Let me post it here in case you need the links to these issues later on. So uh, thank you so much for listening. Uh, if you have any question, please ask. Thank you. So the link to the slides. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, Lovez. Thanks, Steve. I have a, I have a quick question for you. That's okay. Um, <laughs> it's something that I actually never got to try myself, so maybe you know. Um, you know when you have um, an action in stimulus, you mm -hmm. give it the event name, and then the controller, mm -hmm. and then the method. Can mm -hmm. you can you use that outside of the controller? Like for example, let's say that um, I have a counter displayed in the left of the page and then i have a button to increment in the right of the page am i allowed to create an action on my controller from outside of the controller uh okay stimulus uses uh there's something called a scope in stimulus so any element that has the data controller attribute all the children of that element can be manipulated using stimulus but once the element it's outside of that scope Let's say we have a div and that div has um, five children. But once you move away from that div that has the data controller, you are not able to use um, stimulus on any of them. Thanks, good to know. So any other question? Do you have time to walk through one of the test files? Like what's the strategy for for the tests and oh okay like just yeah <laughs> like, you know, for example the the one you just uh um you just showed us the code for doing can you show us mm -hmm. the test code for that yeah yeah i i actually forgot about that so let me do that now i mean i, I wrote the test for that before but let me remove everything Okay, so we use um, Jest for testing and stimulus. So uh, first of all, we need to know how the HTML actually looks like for the controller, which is this. So what you just need to do is you can copy it. So you access the document dot body dot in our HTML because we want we are trying to mock um, the DOM element inside of this test environment.
so this is it now we have added this uh this element this whole element inside of the document which means we can we are able to query selector any of the elements later so once you've done this increment button. Ms. Lovett, frozen. Or is it me? No, I think she's frozen. Oh, damn. I'll give her a couple of minutes and see if she's not back around, I'll talk you through one of the test cases we worked on together. While we're waiting, I had another. Can't hear you since I am muted. Uh, sorry. The when we when she was demoing, the console was logging all the um javascript events how, how how did that get set up is that something that that our uh, um wagtail infrastructure currently does or did she turn that on somehow yeah exactly she turned it uh, we turned it on um in the stimulus configuration it's the the, the stimulus debugger ah, um okay. I can, I'll show you that now while we wait for Lois to be back and uh, give you a bit more of a tour of the. Um, yeah, that looked so helpful. Um, just pinning up a bit which files I have opened. So we're inside uh, what is client subfolder, which is all things JavaScript and CSS, and we have SRC. And then in there, we have controllers. That's all the stimulus things. Um, in the index file, we have a definition of all of our controllers. And if I check where this is used, I'll see our stimulus initialization function. And if I check that, I see that we have debug mode turned on right there. So it doesn't log in um, live water instances, but if it will log if you're um, if you're a dev contributing to Wagtail. Um, Excellent. And then your question about uh, about the testing. So I'll get back to my list of controllers um for each of them we follow the same convention as we we have with react code where um the the actual code of the widget is written in typescript and then we have a separate dot test file for unit tests and a separate dot stories file for storybook visual testing which i don't think i'll, I'll demo right now um so if we look at the dot test file I forget how much how much Loveth had said before she dropped off, but um, we have this describe block. So that's uh, coming from um, this library called Jest, which defines the the structure of our test cases. So always at the top is the name of the controller that we're testing, 
And then I think right before she dropped off, she mentioned that we have to mock the, the DOM. So we have to mock the HTML of the page that we're going to test. So in this case, before each of our test cases for stimulus, we always set the document body to contain this form element, which has one element inside it that uses our controller. So here the controller is called auto field. Um, and this controller is a relatively simple one, similar to the one she was demoing with the, the increment where there's a single action. So here the action hooks into the change event. And on that auto field controller, calls its submit function, just like she would call the um, increment function on the click event in her example. Um, then if we look at uh, the specifics of, of the code a bit more, something else we have to do before, before every um, test case is to start stimulus. <laughs> um, feels a bit silly to mention, but you know it's needed. And as well as start it, we have to register the um, controller. So I, I don't recall her demoing that earlier today um, in Wagtail itself and outside as well. Whenever you make a controller with stimulus, you always have to register it so that you know stimulus knows what's loaded on the page right now. And then we can write the actual test case. So. I'll just uh, skip over those bits for now and show you what's left. Um, here are our test cases as simple as we know what's, what event is um, going to be uh, firing our, our submit method. So we're going to simulate that event on the elements we want to use. And there's, there's literally nothing specific to stimulus here. We're just using vanilla JavaScript DOM APIs that allow you to you know, interact with the elements on the page, regardless of which framework they are built with. And um, in this specific test case, what matters to us is that this request submit function has been called. And we also check what it's been called with, because that's the specifics of how this controller works. Um, back to the increments. You do something like, uh, oh, I want to select my, my button element. And um, for the button element, I want to simulate a, a click event. And then uh, whenever there is a click, you'd want to inspect the DOM and check, oh, yes, the value has been updated. So yeah, pretty cool that. Um, there's nothing too specific to stimulus once you actually uh, register the controllers. It's just, you know, vanilla JavaScript testing it can be verbose, but at least there is no framework to learn. Um, does that help? Do you, do you have other questions? No, that was that was great. Oh. Sweet. Um, um, and I guess at the moment we're still in the process of um, really implementing stimulus in Wagtail core. But I guess, I believe the idea was also that we would give uh, entry points for plugin maintainers. Um, is there anything in place already? How would you register your own controller or it's just too early at the moment? Uh, that's a good question, Loic. Um, I'll have to look at the code. <laughs> To check, I, I believe that right now it's still too early. Um, but essentially, we made sure that what we've built so far is built in a way that will allow this when the time is right. It's really more about, you know, documenting how to do it. Um, so this in its stimulus function, right now, uh, you can call it with any stimulus controller's definition. But in what itself, we only call it with um, the ones we built ourselves. Um, oh, the race is back. <laughs> oh, we can't hear you. You're muted. My Wi Fi disconnected and I never noticed. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Good for you, there. <laughs> <That was sad. laughs> 
You were probably wondering why we were so silent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. No, uh, I just um we just talked through an example of how to write tests with the auto field controller. Okay. And um Loic was asking um whether we already support people creating their own controllers and the short answer is no unfortunately um but i don't think we're far off at all it's just mm -hmm. felt safer to try it out proper first before we um have other people use this yeah Well, it looks fantastic. I'm excited. <laughs> Cynthia had also asked Loveth about um, the debugger in the console log that shows the controllers and um, which actions have been triggered. Uh, I just mentioned how it's set up in, in um, Stimulus. Do you want to say anything else about that? Uh, do you mean when the controller instance gets um, initialized in the console? Yeah, and I think you can view whenever there's an action that's created as well. Uh, yes, let me see. Mm -hmm. Come in, let me share my screen. Yeah, begin to know if you if you end up ended up using this a lot or whether it's just you know like now and then. Are you talking about this? Yep. Oh, yes, okay. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, when I first started um, contributing to stimulus, I had a lot of issues. So I never actually realized when the controller instance got connected to the DOM or whether it was working or not. So this is like a way for you to know how many controllers are working on this page. So as you can see from here, one, two, three, there are three controllers that are on this page. The first is the skip link when you click on the tab and then you can see the, the, the focus move to this um, button element. That is the first controller that is on this page. The next is the increment button, which is what we created during this call. Why the other is the upgrade, um, which is this one here. So it, it lets you know um, anytime that a controller um, is connected to the DOM in a particular page. And when I click here, you see that it it, it actually also lets you know that, okay, hey, you've just clicked here. This controller, you've, you've called the method on this button. You've called the controller method, which is the, the data action method on this button, which is this increment here. And this is the identifier. So it's actually a pretty important thing if you are not actually sure about the fact that um, your code has been added properly inside of the, the Wagtail's code base, if it's not been linked properly. So you can come here to check if it's if it's if it has been connected to the DOM. Then if it hasn't, then you have to like go through what you've done to see if you made any error somewhere. I see there are lots of questions in the in the chat. Um, Ab Abraham Jude, I think quite a bit of the presentation today was about what stimulus is all about, if I'm honest. So I think it would be better for you to see um, the recording, which we'll share uh, hopefully hopefully by the end of the day, um, and if not tomorrow. Uh, do you want to take um, Suyashi's question, Loveth? Uh uh okay so i think i don't remember exactly the version that stimulus got introduced into wagtail but if you are using the the current version like everything should work 
and then you don't need to install any dependency for stimulus you don't need to install anything because everything has already been installed like everything is already inside of the code base you understand so what you just need to do is you just need to um if you create a new controller you just need to add it to the index or typescript inside of the um, controllers folder and it will be connected so you don't need to install anything again you understand like everything has been fixed and be set up to like to work yeah i believe the version is folder two so it would make sense that it fails in older versions if i recall we had been discussing stimulus from more than a year ago as a solution for our needs and uh, then it's only as part of the preparation steps for this internship that we actually merged stimulus as a framework into the, the CMS. Okay. Should we leave it there? Yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> well, thank you again, Lovice. All right, thank you, yeah. Tibo. Thanks, guys, Thanks, for everybody. joining. Really, really appreciate <laughs> the intro. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, bye. Bye. <laughs> Hope you took a screenshot. Oh, he has left. Um, Pat, you did take a screenshot. Yay. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, Sri Yash. Okay. The, I think the challenge that we actually like trying to fix with stimulus is because there are a lot of um, window globals and then a line scripts inside of the code base. And what this actually like does is the fact that it's, it's, it reduces the, it increases a lot of complexities inside of the code. And it's like very difficult to improve. It's very difficult to maintain and improve over time, just like the issue we are experiencing now in editor.js. So, and yeah, it's also difficult to uh, maintain over time. So, which is why we are trying to introduce uh, a simpler and lightweight framework that is going to sort out these issues. So, when we use um, stimulus, we are only working with data attributes. We are working in data attributes in the sense that everybody is going to be coding the same way because the the class based instance the static um, values the static class the static target and it's going to be exactly the same method it's just that probably the functions or the methods that you are creating inside of that class is going to be doing different things but but that's just like basically the only thing that is going to be different for all stimulus controllers you understand but the data attributes that you are going to be adding to the html element is just basically going to follow the same format so doing this would actually make it easier for developers to improve the code over time you understand so what i just need to do i just need to locate the stimulus controller file locate the method make some changes to it so i don't have to start initializing anything ev everywhere you get so it actually like make it easier for everybody both the maintenance and the people that are coming in to contribute so does that answer your question All right, okay, no problem. So I'm leaving the call now. Um, bye, guys. Thanks.